Nvidia started GTC today around the same time as GDC is starting, and that means a lot of Nvidia news. So today we're talking about DXR coming to Pascal cards, which means that sort of to some extent RTX is coming to Pascal cards, and also uh, talking about some actually pretty cool AI research that's been done and you may find interesting. For example, effortlessly generating a sort of realistic landscape, almost like a computer version of Bob Ross, where you have, as a viewer or user, minimal skill, but through following the software, it can produce maximum quality output. So we're talking about both of those today. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Master Motherboard, which comes equipped with one of the more powerful Z390 VRMs for heavier overclocks on the new 9th gen Intel CPUs. The Aorus Master is also one of the few motherboards with a real heatsink this generation, featuring a mix of high surface area fins and looks oriented cover blocks. Oh, and it's also got updated RGB illumination. Learn more at the link below. Let's start off with the DXR stuff. So DXR is coming to GTX Pascal cards. That'll start with 1066 gigabyte and up. 1063 gigabyte and below, from our understanding, will not be supported. This will be done through a driver flip in the uh, April release. So there'll be a, a, just a switch where they can flip it on or off. And through the April drivers, Pascal 1066 plus will be supported for DXR. So if you're playing a game like Battlefield 5 or Shadow of the Tomb Raider once the update comes out, that, and you have Pascal 10 ATI, maybe you'll be able to use DXR features with that card. This also supports Touring GTX cards, which do not have the RT cores or Tensor cores enabled, but are still uh, capable of running DXR. So DXR, if you don't know, it's a DirectX 12 Microsoft feature. If you have a DX12 ready card, then you already have a DXR ready card. The difference is that the physical hardware on the Touring cards will better accelerate ray tracing and if you're doing DLSS, then the tensor cores will accelerate, accelerate DLSS. So it'll run slower for sure with Pascal or with GTX 1660 type cards, but it will run and that's changing with the April update. So that's what you need to know there, the basics anyway. For a bit more information, what's going on here is that Nvidia gave a few examples where in a hypothetical scenario, and this is something we don't get to see a lot, so it's kind of cool. Hypothetical scenario is that to run Metro with DXR at 60 FPS, using Pascal, meaning no RT acceleration, no tensor cores, anything like that, just using Pascal architecture. NVIDIA did some calculations and basically just some mental math simulation and found that they would need about 44 teraflops uh, from about 11 on the 1080 Ti of, of floating point performance in order to run 60 FPS Metro at 1440p instead of 18, where they are today. And uh, that's with uh, DXR enabled. So that piece of hardware, which doesn't exist, would be about a 650 watt TDP and would have 35 billion transistors. So clearly, Nvidia took the approach instead of building RT cores into its, into its GPUs, and we've already talked about that storyline. In addition to this, in the presentation, Nvidia gave us a look that we don't normally get to see where we see the, uh, the rendering pipeline as it's happening on different types of cards or architectures. So you can see, in the pipeline, there's traditional rendering at the front. The really big bar in the middle is ray tracing, where uh, either it's using RT cores or it's not. And for the ones that are slower, the longer bars there, they are not using RT cores to accelerate. And then there's traditional rendering at the end. So the interesting bit is that you can actually see now, visualize the ups and downs from accessing memory, things like that towards the end of the pipeline, or where you see the purple stacked on top of the gray, you can see the concurrency uh, of integer and floating point where with the Turing hardware, as we've already discussed, integer and floating point operations can run simultaneously. And this does affect gaming in the more compute heavy games like uh, Shadow of War or Sniper Elite 4 or something like that. And we have a full interview with NVIDIA on that from previously. So the ray tracing workload introduces uh, uh, some more integer instructions and then you use the RT acceleration and obviously it gets a whole lot easier to run. So the short version of that part of the news is that there's a driver coming in April, it's enabling RTX or well DXR on Pascal cards. We've already talked about which ones. It's not going to run particularly well compared to the RT hardware. This should not surprise anybody. And so we asked, well, what's, what's your objective? Why are you enabling this then? 
for cards that won't really run it that well, what's the goal? And the, the goal is twofold. So on the developer side, this encourages developers to build out more DXR features because there's a greater install base. And if you have a game where maybe the graphics aren't as intensive, you could maybe get away with enabling some specific DXR features like shadows or ray trace reflections or whatever one-off feature you want to use. So there's a bigger install base, which is more encouragement for developers to grow DXR inclusion in games. And then separately, on the uh, developer side, it does expand the developer install base too, where if they don't all have RT or RTX cards, then now they can start working with DXR inclusion in games. Anyway, on the gaming side, it, Nvidia gave us their answer, but our take on it is this. Uh, on the gaming side, it's sort of like a test drive where it allows the user to enable the feature and if they're unhappy with performance, it's fine, they turn it off, but they still get to see it. And so that might be a bit of encouragement to push people to upgrade to RTX cards because they can see what the difference is. And if they really like it, but they don't have the performance, clearly they know what to buy. And it's going to be a forced RTX uh, upgrade in that use case. So that's kind of how we interpret it. This isn't necessarily bad. Actually, it's, it's overall good to make DXR, I mean, to enable it on cards that clearly already support it, even if they don't run it well, let the user make the decision if they don't want to have a low frame rate. But it should still run decently with low settings in games where you can drop down, like Battlefield 5. And so we'll, we'll do testing as it becomes relevant. But April is the update for that. And a split focus on gamers and developers. Epic Games will have a briefing at GDC on March 20th. We've already shown Epic Games uh, Unreal Engine updates. We're using the second preview build. There's, there are more of them now, and we'll have more of those shown off soon, too, in our videos. But Epic's got an official update coming out. And then Unity is also adding DXR support for developers. So you're going to see some more uh, developers starting to expand on their titles with DXR effects. But keep in mind that many games are in development for multiple years, so it could be a little bit before we see them. To answer the question preemptively, developers don't have to enable anything for games that are already out with DXR features. It'll just work with the driver update, so you won't be waiting for developers. And this is really meant for basic ray tracing. Now, on the research side, the interesting thing here was uh, we, we have Jim Vincent on the floor at GTC for us, and he sent this information along to me. They have Gaugan, a new software utility that does sort of AI-generated scenery. And this is where it's like, again, a, an AI version of Bob Ross, where you feed it in some really basic skillless input as a user who has absolutely no artistic ability, and you get something that, that's actually pretty presentable. And that's because, in this case, some, a machine is interpreting it for you and turning it into something with a bit more quality. And this is done through segmentation. Uh, so what you do is you use the different brushes in there. So you can have like a, a snow brush, a sky brush, a sea brush, uh, different landscapes, forests, whatever. You use the brush, you paint a broad stroke, and the software will interpret what that means relative to the other elements in the scene. And so in the uh, demonstration shown where uh, Brian Catanzaro, who is the VP of Applied Deep Learning Research and someone we've actually met at GTC previously, does really good work at NVIDIA on the research side, he was talking about how it all works and shows some footage of painting basic things like mountains with just a brown brush, basically. And then it comes out as, as something that's interpreted by AI. So some basic information here, again, as in Gaugan, the software, is a generative adversarial network. And it's used for converting segmentation maps into images from NVIDIA's own press release. And then uh, Catanzaro said in, in his interview in the video that, quote, I really think this technology is going to be great for architects, designers, people making virtual worlds to train robots and cars. So actually a very good point there. Not necessarily something for the average end user, but still pretty cool stuff. And other than that, NVIDIA did have announcements about CUDA X, CUDA X AI. We don't have details yet. NVIDIA announced a T4 GPU or something like that. Don't have any details yet at time of filming, but they will be out by the time this video goes up. And there's a new Quadro card, or, or maybe they were just talking about the Quadro 8000 RTX that's already been uh, announced publicly. And then NVIDIA Omniverse. And we also we don't have a lot of information on that either. It's just an app that connects a bunch of other apps. So the really interesting stuff here is going to be DXR on Pascal and then that Gaugan app, just because it's kind of neat. So that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. As always, subscribe for more. 
You can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly or store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt, well, sort of like this one. This was limited, but we have a, a teal version of it on the store. I'll see you all next time.